Hello, in this presentation I will show how to obtain Danavid Hardamer parameters of classic robots used in many academic examples. The aim of the presentation is to solve the forward kinematics of some robot manipulators shown in many academic examples using the Navid Hardamer method. In the following slides I will explain how to set reference frames for each link and how to obtain associated Denavid Hardamer parameters. Just to recall, in the Navid Hardamer parameter method there are some ambiguities regarding the direction of some axis and therefore the solution for the parameter is, is not unique but they represent actually the same forward kinematic model. The RPR robot has three joints, a first revolute joint followed by a prismatic joint and a third revolute joint. The first step that we must solve is the identification of robot links and joints. In the figure on the left I have indicated which are the links numbered with letters from E0 to E3 and which are the joint axes numbered from Q1 to Q3. Next, we must set the position and orientation of the reference frame associated to the robot base. The only requirement is that Z0 passes through the joint 1. In our case, we have positioned this frame at the bottom of the robot base link. The next step is to set the Z axis of the remainder of reference frames. According to the method, these must lay in the axis of the next joint. Therefore, Z1 is placed in joint 2, Z2 is placed in joint 3, and Z3 has the same direction as Z2, because it's the last axis. We will also set the position of the X axis. In this case, we must first compute the common normal between Zi and Zi-1 axis to determine the intersection point with the Zi axis. Once known, we can set the xi axis in the direction of set common normal, no matter the sign. For example, we have placed x1 axis so that it is perpendicular to z0 and z1, and the intersection point is the one where joints q1 and q2 intersect. Axis x2 points in the same direction as axis x1 because Joints Z1 and Z2 are coincident and we could choose any arbitrary direction as long as it is perpendicular to those axes. For the same reason we have placed X3 in the same direction as X2. Note that uh, the position of the reference frame 2 is totally arbitrary. I have placed it at the end of the link 2 but it could have been placed in other positions along the third joint. Reference frame is usually placed at the end of the robot, at the tip of the end effector indeed. Once the X and Z axis have been placed, the Y axis came out of applying the right hand rule, as it can be seen. In the table, I show the Denabit Harden parameters associated with the transformation between reference frames. I usually assume that the configuration provided in the figure is the home configuration, with all joint values equal to zero. Please remember that the angle theta is the angle that we must rotate about the axis zi-1 so that xi-1 points towards xi. The quantity di represents the displacement along the zi-1 axis while the quantity Ai is the displacement in the direction of the xi axis. Finally, the angle alpha i is the rotation around the xi axis so that zi minus 1 is aligned with zi. In this second example, we have a PRR robot with one prismatic and two revolute joints, as you can see. The procedure is the same as before, we first identify the links and joints numbered from E0 to E3 and Q1 to Q3, respectively. Next, we set the position of the reference frame of the robot base, usually at the bottom, with Z0 axis pointing in the direction of joint 1. 
Then we set the position of the rest of the z axis, each one on the axis on the next join. The z3 axis will point in the same direction as the z2 axis. Then we place x axis. In this case, all joints are parallel, so the position of each of the remaining reference frame is totally arbitrary. Each frame could have been placed at arbitrary heights, but obviously I have selected those positions because in this way they represent a point of a physical link or a physical point of the link. The direction of the x axis is also arbitrary in this case. We could have point in other arbitrary directions as long as they are perpendicular to the z axis, but again it makes sense to choose those that point towards the tip of the end effector. The y-axis again will come out as a consequence of applying the right-hand rule. In the denabit hardam parameter table, we can see that because we have selected the correct position of reference frames, many parameters become zero or are directly associated with the separation distance between the axes. If we would have chosen to set uh, the x-axis on pointing on different directions, then we will have rotations of pi or some uh, theta parameter and negative values of the a parameter uh, and therefore it would make things more complicated, let's say. The RRP robot shown has two revolute joints and a final prismat prismatic joint. Again, we must identify the links and joints of the robot and set the position of reference frames of the base, as you can see. The set axis must be contained in the direction of the subsequent joints, therefore set 1 will be placed on joint 2, set 2 will be placed on joint 3 and z3 has the same direction as z2. The x axis must be perpendicular to the z axis and to the previous z axis and therefore x1 will point as shown in the figure, as its direction is perpendicular to z0 and z1. The x2 axis will point up or down because the normal common of z1 and z2 is the vertical line coincident with q1 in this case. x2 pointing upwards or downwards is an arbitrary decision. Anyway, I have also decided that x3 points in the same direction as x2. In the table of the Nabit Harden parameters, we can observe how parameters theta and alpha values are different from zero as a consequence of rotations in x and z axis. As I have mentioned, if we had selected opposite directions for z and x, we would have probably get positive parameter values, but in the end the result would be the same. The RRR robot has three revolute joints. Its structure is just like the three, three first joints of the vast majority of industrial robot manipulators. Joint 1 is a vertical joint, while joints 2 and 3 are horizontal and parallel joints. Following the ideas of the previous steps, we need first to identify links and joints as well as to set the position of the reference frame 0. The set axis always points in the direction of the next joint, and the x axis are perpendicular to the z axis and the previous uh, uh, joint. For example, x1 axis is perpendicular to z1 and z0 pointing in the same direction as x0, while x2 and x3 axis will point upwards as their common normal is the vertical line coincident in this case with q1. As a consequence, we can now place the y axis and obtain the denabit hardware parameters that are shown in the table. I would like to emphasize that for this type of robot, Axis Z3 points in the same direction as axis Z2, while in a robot manipulator with 6 degrees of freedom, Z3 would point in the same direction of the fourth axis, and thus the solution 
is slightly different from the one shown here for the last row. In this final example, we will study the Cartesian robot case with three prismatic joints. In this case, as you can see, we have chosen as joint one as the one on the left side, although due to the geometry of the robot, we could have chosen any direction parallel to Q1. In fact, chosen the one in the middle that intersects with axis 2 and 3 would make things much easier, but for convenience, I have selected the one on the left corner so that the reference frame of the robot base is necessarily placed on the axis. In this case, I have selected the corner of the robot frame as the reference frame 0. The difference is that if we, have, if we would have placed uh, axis Q1 in a different position, then what we consider to be the robot base would be simply different. So, following with the example, the next thing to do is to set the, the direction of the set axis as shown in the figure on the left then we need to set the direction of x axis, always perpendicular, remember, to zi and zi minus 1. In this case, axis 3 could have been chosen to be with any arbitrary direction as long as it is perpendicular to z3, because z2 and z3 are parallel. In my case, I have decided to select that specific direction so that x0 and x3 have the same direction. And finally, we will be able to set the y-axis following the right-hand rule and obtain the Denerberit Hardenberg parameters as shown in the table. As you can see, there are many parameters different from zero because my preliminary decision for selecting the position of the reference frame zero. In this video, I have shown several academic examples to learn how to obtain the Navit Hardenberg parameters and how to set reference frames for each link. Thank you very much.